everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a video on the Banana Republic fragrances. This video is a collaboration with So Avant Garde, which is a US based website. And I do have an exclusive discount code for you, Soki20 to get 20% off. And they sell the whole Banana Republic range, which I'm gonna take you through in a moment, as well as lots of other unusual perfumes, niche perfumes, and lots of different things to discover on there. So thank you So Avant Garde for sending me these select of Banana Republic perfumes to try with you. If you're new here, then hello, welcome. We are all about perfumes. I have hundreds of videos just like this. And in the description box, you'll find links to the So Avant Gold website where you can get 20% off, along with other places where you can get Banana Republic around the world. And of course, to my website and my online shop where you can get my perfumes Empress and Aphrodite that's out soon, along with my super concentrated soy wax candles. Cool, so I'm gonna start off with the dark cherry and amber fragrance. I've been really intrigued by this fragrance ever since I heard about it. I love the bottle and the Banana Republic fragrances come in these like heavy glass bottles that have quite intense colour. They are like transparent but it is quite a strong colour similar to what I use on my bottles. I do like a good strong coloured bottle. And dark cherry and amber I have been wanting to try for ages because I know cherry perfumes are definitely having a bit of a moment recently but often they are more of a sweet sweet fruity cherry or more of a, they call it maranchino cherry. Now this one, I've been wearing it all day actually, and it's definitely reminding me more of that dark cherry, that black cherry note, similar to Kayali Love Fest Burning Cherry. But even though it says amber, and there is a bit of an ambery feel to it, I do find this a more uplifting and fresher than the Love Fest fragrance from Kayali. And I think that comes from a cherry blossom note that they've put in here, which is really, really pretty and it just lifts it because amber and that dark cherry are quite heavy notes. So by having that um, cherry blossom in here, I think this makes it a bit more universal. You could definitely wear this all year round, spring, summer. These are of course Eau de Parfums and these are relatively affordable fragrances. You're looking about $80, $90 US for these. So of course you've got my 20% discount code. So um, take that off. And in the UK as well, um, at the perfume shop, they're around about 30 pounds. So I'll leave those links down below. But this is definitely one of my favorites from the Banana Republic range. So I've got lots of different ones to try here. I think I'm gonna start with the ones that have numbers on. So they have a whole bunch of different fragrances and this icon collection is their more recent collection. And within that, you've got fragrances that have these numbers. So I'm gonna start with number six, which is called Black Platinum. I think one thing to note is these are all gender neutral fragrances. They're not particularly men or women. And I definitely get that from the Black Cherry. For me, this one, the Black Platinum is very universal. It's quite a clean fragrance. It's reminding me a bit of Dior Collection Privy, though of course it's much more affordable. So it has a leather note in it, but it's a very clean leather. There's a cactus note and orange blossom and a bit of a patchouli amber, but this feels very, yeah, really is reminding me of that clean sort of just got out the shower, but in a very sophisticated way. A little bit of a fresh cotton, fresh linen type vibe, but I would say that's quite a close dupe to Ambergris from Dior Collection Pre-V, so definitely an affordable dupe there. That feels very expensive smelling as well. It feels very classy, and definitely I can see a man wearing that. It's got that real crisp, linen-y feel to it. Okay, so next I've got, this is number 90, which is pure white. Okay, so this one definitely has those like calming vibes to it. The name Pure White definitely feels appropriate. So we've got a green tea note in here along with citrus. So it does definitely have that Elizabeth Arden green tea vibe. Sort of grapefruit bergamot and quite a bit of must as, um, must? Musk as well, mixed in with that green tea. So again, giving me a bit of a clean linen cotton feel. There's also a lavender in here, which is very calming. And I find when it's, you get things like a green tea and a, f and a fresh clean feeling mixed with lavender. It's just very, very relaxing and calming. Again, feels super unisex. I'd say that would be nice for daytime, hot weather when you want something sophisticated but clean. I have to say first impression so far, all the fragrances do have a very sophisticated feel to them. They do, it is really reminding me of that Dior Collection Privy. Okay, next 83 Leather Reserve. Hmm. 
So this is quite a green, slightly woody, outdoorsy scent. I'm actually not getting leather as a main note. I'm getting cypress. Mm, I'm getting cypresses and lemons. Like I feel fresh, but also very green. I'm outdoors, I can see trees. There's a neroli and vetiver. I'm definitely getting the vetiver as it is sort of developing as well. So this is definitely one of those green perfumes, but it's not overly green. There's no sort of oak moss in here. Instead, it's like more fresh, summery green, being outside side Italian coast with all cypress trees around you. It's that type of vibe to me, in my view. Again, very unisex and very classy. Okay, so the last I've got from the numbers collection, this is 17 Oud Mosaic. So unsurprisingly, I'm definitely getting Oud here. It has a rose combining with the oud and also a bit of a plum so i'm getting a little bit of a fruitiness a little bit of a floralness to the oud it's not too ambery too intense it's also not particularly sweet um, with a bit of fresh cardamom but it's i'd say this is a very classic oud scent it's just pure oud it's not been made sweet very unisex as usual with classic notes that oud tends to be combined with. Rose, saffron, amber, plum works well, but it's not fruity and the cardamom just lifts it a bit. And it's definitely the strongest one that I've smelt so far from the range, which is to be expected because oud is a really strong, heavy note. So if you're looking for a relatively affordable oud, I think that's a great option. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna go for one which has a nice sort of pink color to it. This is peony and peppercorn. Mmm. So I'd say this is actually quite rosy. I'm getting rose, peony, but that pink pepper, but also quite a lot of bergamot. It's very fresh, light. I think the pink colored bottle really represents this fragrance because it feels springtime, light, innocent. I probably would have called it peony and rose or something. Cause sometimes you put pepper, call, you know, you say pepper and people think it's gonna be spicy. It's definitely not. It's very cute, innocent, young, pretty, exactly representing the color bottle that it is. I actually really like that. It's quite light, it's an eau de parfum. I think that's gonna be nice for someone looking for an everyday, innocent type fragrance, pretty. If you like your sort of misty or type perfumes with the peony and the rose, this is a nice option. And what I like is they have an added lychee, which seems to be really popular at the moment to add lychee to rose peony fragrances. I think the bergamot is much fresher. So yeah, that's really pretty, easy going, very difficult for anyone to dislike that, I'd say. So next we've got gardenia and cardamom that comes in a very sort of pure white gray bottle. Mm. So this actually has a good amount of tuberose in as well. I'm getting all the white florals from this, tuberose, jasmine, and the gardenia, magnolia, there's even ylang ylang. So this is like your lots of the white floral fragrances that are quite popular at the moment. I don't get a huge amount of cardamom, but it feels quite green. There's a carnation note in here. So it feels sort of English country garden, springtime, white florals, feminine, bouquet of flowers. It's pretty good like silage. I can really smell it. You've got a, quite a few strong notes in there, so that makes sense. Um, but that's definitely sort of a, a sort of tribute to all the white florals. And if you're a white floral fan, it's definitely one you'll like. Okay, next up we've got Neroli Woods. I think this is one of their newer ones. Mmm. So I really get the Neroli here. So Neroli is like the bitter orange blossom tree, I think. So it's quite citrusy, but quite green and a bit woody as well. So it feels very uplifting, very summery. And there's a bit of a solar note in here, which is a chemical creation solar note, which recreates that warmth, that feeling of like warm sun hitting your skin. So again, I feel very much like I'm outdoors in the Italian coast or Seville, you know, surrounded by orange trees. That's light, pretty feminine, which reminds me quite a bit of um, a lot of the different Jo Malone's, Jo Love's fragrances that are very fresh, clean. Again, very difficult for anyone to dislike that. And it definitely feels, Neroli is such a unisex fragrance. So if you like your citruses, but you don't want something that's like lemon, you know, some lemon perfumes can smell like washing up liquid or something or, you know, spray. I think Neroli is just more complex, classy. It has that green note in. So nice fresh one for hot weather there, I'd say. Okay, so next I have to tobacco and tonka bean. And this one comes in this really deep purple bottle. Mm. 
So that's really interesting. It has a slight Play-Doh feel. You guys know I like it when fragrances have that. It's quite sexy evening. Tonka Bean is a very warm note. I'm getting that tobacco leaf. There's a bit of coconut in there as well. And I'm definitely, definitely getting vanilla in this as well. I would say this was tobacco, tonka bean and vanilla as the most appropriate name. A little bit like Jimmy Choo Fever, that sort of um, warm, sexy plum note with the tonka bean. For me, this would definitely be evening or during the day, perhaps in the winter time for fans of vanilla warm fragrances. Very comforting and cozy. Okay, so next up I have Linen Vetiver. So this one definitely does have a linen smell to it, like a laundry smell. You've got fresh bergamot, pettigrain, and then there's a bit of a hyacinth note underneath along with vetiver, which is creating a greenness, which you do sort of associate um, often with like laundry and um, fabric softener and those sort of more floral tones. I think that is one that's quite similar to some of their other fragrances that have that same linen feel. I think if you like Izzy Miyake, you dropped to Izzy, which is another hyacinth fragrance. I think you'd like that. Clean, simple, fresh, classy. Okay and now I have some from their classic range. So I'm going to start with classic red. This has the red bottle with it sort of fades up to transparent. So this feels very neutral. Um, there's a bit of a grapefruit but it's not really sharp. Slightly herbal, again a bit of lilac. And it's a honeysuckle note they've got in here, which is a very delicate fragrance note. That is definitely, I see why it's called classic because it's just like a very clean, simple, neutral fragrance. And it's almost a little bit like a pink grapefruit. I do like that. I think that would definitely be something for hot weather and something you could, sh you know, share with your partner, very gender neutral. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Classic, just clean, just clean feeling of classicness, I guess. <laughs> so next we have classic green. So you won't be surprised to know that this definitely has a bit more of a green feeling to it, but it is very clean, very light. It actually reminds me a little bit of Chanel Chance Eau Fresh. It's got that same slightly woody, fresh note in it, but still very uplifting with bergamot. Again, just a very classical, fresh green fragrance. Again, I'd say summertime. Next up, I've got Classic Citrus. So this one is definitely citrusy. It's a little bit warmer because it's got some orange notes in here from a clementine. You've got ginger and pine as well, but you've still got that fresh grapefruit. It's just a little bit warmer, a little bit more orangey. Again, it's giving me quite an aqua de palma type feel, fresh orange citrus. I like that one. I do like my orange perfumes. Okay, and then lastly, we have classic aqua. It comes with a blue liquid. So this one definitely is aquatic. It's got that like fresh sea breeze feel to it, but it's also quite aromatic, a bit of lavender, a bit of sage, woody notes. So I'm getting the, the coastal feel of where there's like driftwood washed up, perhaps the sort of grasses giving a more aromatic feel of being near the sea. Feels very neutral and feels very clean. I think the classic range all feel quite light, summery, very clean feeling. And then the, the numbers range were a bit heavier and then the rest of the icons range were mixed. I definitely think dark cherry amber is one worth a try if you like your cherry fragrances. But I have to say they all have smelled really pretty, classy, elegant. I am impressed with Banana Republic perfumes there. They're so key approved. There are so many in the range. So let me know if you have any, if you tried any, which your favorites are, which you recommend. Let me know in the comments. I do read all your comments. And like I said, the links will be in the description to where you can get 20% off at Avant Garde and where you can get Banana Republic. But that's it guys. So thanks so much for watching as always and I will see you in the next video. Bye.